I'm Tara Joseph looking at the week ahead in Asia with Peter Tal Larson, the editor for Breaking Views for the region. And Peter, what a week it's going to be. We have a focus on leadership in the world's two biggest economies. How do we cope? Well, I, with with, uh, with with mixed with mixed emotions, I think. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, you have new leadership being unveiled in China, but obviously, there's not a huge amount of surprise there about who is actually going to get the top jobs. We know that Xi Jinping is going to be the president. We know that, barring some absolute cataclysm, uh, Li Keqiang is going to be the prime minister. But we'll get back to that in a second, because <clears throat> first we have the U.S. elections. Is there going to be a knock-on effect in Asia? A feeling in Asia about who wins? I think very clearly there's, it has a big impact, the, the, the outcome of that election. Um, the impact is probably greater if Romney wins. Um, you know, he's said various things already that he's going to take a, a harder line towards China. He's going to declare China to be a currency manipulator on his first day in office. So I think a Romney presidency would, would unsettle things in the region reopen the whole question about the South China Sea and so forth. If Obama wins, some of those recede into the, into the background. But Obama's done his fair bit of China bashing in the, uh, in the election as well. So, you know, once again, you have, the question would be, how does that follow through into a new administration? All right, we get that decision midweek here, and Asian markets will be the first to react. Meanwhile, the party congress is opening in China. You were talking about this leadership transition. Do you think we'll see any fireworks? I think there's going to be a lot of attention paid to this. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly stage managed. Um, and apparently, the, 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 the preparations in Beijing are such that, you know, you now, if you want to take a taxi across Beijing, uh, the, the taxi driver has to basically get you to fill out a form saying who you are and where you're going. So nothing is being left to chance. So we assume that actually the lineup is all basically nailed down as well. But although we know the names and we suspect we know the names of the seven and we think it's going to be seven, there's still some room for surprises there. And even if those names come out as we expected, the distribution of the portfolios could still have some impact, especially for, 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 for outside investors. I guess, as you say, it's going to be so carefully managed that we'd have to watch for little innuendos and speeches or little things happening or the social media exploding. Well, exactly, and it, 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 this is really the, the, the situation we have in China. Is people have so little idea, really, of what's going on behind the scenes that, that the criminologists will be out in force watching every little detail, the order in which they come out, where they stand, what they say, what the announcements say, um, for just some kind of clues of what kind of power struggle, what kind of changes have, have taken place in the background. And then there's also the question, actually, of the old leaders receding into the distance. Will Hu Jintao make, as he's sort of apparently claimed, a clean break with the past, or will he retain some kind of power base that allows him to continue to pull the strings even though he's no longer in power? Right, we're out of time, so I'm going to ask you for one word, good or bad, big car earnings out of Japan. Are they going to be terrible, fantastic, okay? Toyota and Nissan, it's both going to be bad. The question is, how bad?